Hello there guys, Francis Gray here. Today I've got a new model to show you all. This is a repainted uh, Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine, which was uh, heavily featured in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Uh, basically this was like a, a main accessory I suppose, which was uh, made to uh, house the uh, Ezio Brotherhood Necker uh, action figure. Uh, basically, uh, you just fits on on the inside there after you uh, swap his hands over to the open hand section. So he just hangs in place. Uh, so there's the underside. So basically how I repainted this. Uh, I'll add some photos now. Uh, basically I started off with the actual, uh, well I suppose it's a toy I suppose or an accessory whichever you would want to call it. Basically, it's all just one like color, and it's all like plastic, and it came with uh, really bad uh, like Borgia insignia, like printed off labels on the wings, and then they're supposed to be here. The originals were shiny and reflected light, and and it just didn't look all that great because back in them days, where would they have printed off you know a vinyl you know insignia? It wouldn't have been; it would have been cloth. So I peeled them off. And then uh, I give uh, I give the entire thing a, like a like a primer coat of white. I didn't go too white because I didn't want it to be like you know like amazingly white. I just give it a quick little spray on the top side and then the underside and then obviously lifted that part up and then did the underneath and etc. Uh, once that had dried, I then got some uh, chalk pastels and then I heavily. Uh, added uh, some uh, stainage uh, in amongst all the grooves. Uh, I, I left that to harden and then uh, the day after I uh, took a damp cloth and then basically just rubbed off the excess which left uh, like a really nice like aged uh, fabric look to it. Uh, Excuse me. And then after that, I uh, I give a couple of coats of uh, dark brown to all the wooden parts to to highlight it from uh, from one to the other. Uh, here's a photo of uh, half of it painted and half of it as it was, like no more or less as it came. Uh, so you can see there's a huge detail uh, difference there. Uh, basically, I built that up on the top side and underneath and all the little like moving accessory parts, which took a long time to paint. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, and then once I dried, I used a lighter brown to add some stainage on highlights, so it looks like it's wood rather than just a standard uh, dark brown. Uh, I give it a couple of coats of matte varnish to help protect uh, the paint because there's one, one part with this, one problem with this is there's quite a lot of uh, straight edges. So while you're like holding the bit like where it was supposed to be wood, while you're holding it and moving it around the paint, your fingers are rubbing off the brown paint. So you need to protect the paint with uh, varnish as you go. So there was a lot of like really like and to get into all the little nooks and crannies and what where have you. Uh, so yeah, so once uh, I give that a couple of coats, I then uh, painted the rope uh, on all of all the different rope parts. Uh, once I had dried, I added a bit of uh, shading to that as well, and the last part was uh, adding the metal. Uh, so that's just basically like a dark chrome silver that I used. Uh, so I used that on all these parts here, uh, the little like wing nuts at the top, this part here, and then obviously the main cannon at the front, and. After that, the only part that was left after that was uh, the burning tarp. Now, the original burning tarp uh, looked good, but for me, it looked a bit more too much like a cotton bud, like the end of a cotton bud. Uh, I wanted to emphasise that it was like fire, that it was uh, you know that it was uh, going to be used as a weapon. So uh, I took some uh, Aves epoxy modelling clay and then uh, wrapped it around the end, uh, pinched off. Some little uh, like little flame wisps at the top. Uh, left that to harden, and then I uh, I used some metallic orange uh, paint that I had uh, as a as an undercoat for the flames, and then I uh, added shading underneath uh, with some red paint going up into the uh, base coat orange. 
up to uh, a light yellow on top. Uh, I'm really happy that how this uh, how that turned out. Uh, it all it all still fires, it all still works. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, I had to repaint the Borgia insignias as well, but that could be done at any later point. You didn't have, you don't have to have a specific point in that you could do that like halfway through, or you could do that at the end. As long as you've uh, dyed your fabric kind of a thing added your shading then you can you can go ahead and add that just make sure that you give it a couple of coats of varnish to help protect it and then basically that's how I ended it I give it another coat of varnish just to make sure and uh, and then yeah there you go there's the finished product uh, all that's left now is to uh, hang it up on the ceiling so I'll go ahead and do that now and then I will sh show you the finished product Okay, there you go, guys. So as you can see, he's up on the ceiling there. He's suspended by your uh, three press pins on the top, which uh, should be strong enough. And there he is, amongst all these uh, fellow uh, assassins. So yes, yeah, so all in all, I think this one turned out really nice, and uh, I think it looks really nice just uh, hanging up there. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this quick video. Uh, please don't forget to click the like button and share on uh, Facebook and Twitter, guys, because it really helps me out. And uh, it helps new people find me as well. Uh, and uh, nothing else to say, but just hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.